Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna briefly put an image on the screen and I want you to either think about or go ahead and put down in the comments how it makes you feel, like what emotion it makes you feel. Ready, three, two, one. So if this image makes you feel anything like upset, sad, angry, then you probably own a car and have owned one for more than a year. This is the AD410 that Ansel sent in to us, and I'm gonna go ahead and review it, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it works, this particular one, but I'm going to show you how to actually use a scanner and use it for things like clearing codes, reading live data, and I'm also gonna show you something that I wish I learned a long time ago, and that is how to read fuel trims. And fuel trims can be extremely helpful when trying to diagnose a problem with a vehicle. But that's kind of for the more intermediate person. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of start off with the basic things, clearing codes. And I can't think of a better car to demonstrate it on than my cousin's Buick, I think it's an Acadia. Uh, I think it's like a 2013. Let's go ahead and start there mostly because the interior is nice and clean. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do before connecting your scanner is obviously finding your ODB port on your car. And on this Buick, it is where I find them usually on North American and Asian vehicles, which is driver's side by your left leg, kind of right down by the kick panel. Um, they can also be somewhere in the middle, kind of in the same place or over on the right side of the driver's side kick panel. Uh, European cars, they can sometimes be in the cubby and kind of the front of the dash as well as in like the uh, center console i've seen them there as well now usually when connecting a scanner you do want to have the vehicle in the on position but you don't want to have it actually running so basically this is your startup all there is for buttons is just two little there's an up arrow and a down arrow an enter and exit we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go to regular odb2 and yep, it's gonna take a minute to connect. Okay, so it says there is a drivetrain code. So we know we have a code in there. Let's go ahead and try to figure out exactly what that code is. So from there, we will just hit the enter button again and just hit ECU one, that's fine. Now it says read codes, erase codes, all that. You wanna go ahead and go to read codes there, hit enter. And ooh, we have a P0430 which means that there is a problem with the efficiency of bank two, which is basically, usually it, uh, a P420 is for the first bank, P430 is for a second bank. Don't really need to worry about any of that, but what that means is there could possibly be an O2 sensor that is bad on the second bank, or it could be a bad catalytic converter, which would be definitely I would rather it be the O2 sensor if it was my vehicle. Well, now let's go ahead and clear that. So basically all we have to do is hit exit, should go back. Okay, now go to erase codes. Enter, clear, reset, diagonal. are you sure? Yes, we are sure. It has been cleared. So congratulations, you have successfully cleared your first code. Now let's get a little bit deeper. Um, one thing that this thing actually can do for its 40 or $50 price tag, which I thought was pretty cool, is it can also give you live data. And this comes in very handy. So basically for that, all we would have to do is go down to your data stream. Uh, we're gonna go to view all items. You can select certain PIDs or certain items that you want to actually view, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put everything up. Now this should give us a list, yep of all of the different things see we've got long-term short-term fuel and the short term's looking good on bank two that's looking pretty decent on bank one two uh you can look at fuel rage fuel excuse me fuel rail pressure uh map pressure engine rpms Ooh. Vehicle speed, ignition time, advanced for cylinder one, absolute throttle position. So basically with all of this information, um, pretty much with Google or a little bit of research, you can figure out and you can kind of pinpoint exactly what is wrong with your car. And one of my favorite things to use when I'm diagnosing a vehicle is fuel trims. Fuel trims, you want them to be, especially on the short term, you want them to stay within positive 5% and negative 5%. 
And what that means is how much more or how much less fuel is each cylinder requiring to fire. Now, a lot of different things can change this, like weather, gas quality, tune up if it needs it or whatever. So that's how we kind of look at that. Now, if it's going high to the positive, that means that it's trying to send more fuel to that cylinder to keep it happy, basically. So that means that it's thinking that it is running lean. Now, if it's going negative, that means that it's wanting to send less fuel to make that cylinder happy, and therefore it thinks it is running rich. So I would definitely suggest to do you know, a lot more research on fuel trims and actually monitoring them to help you in diagnosing whatever may be wrong with your car. One thing I didn't mention with all this is, yeah, you know, you could go to AutoZone or wherever, one of the parts stores, and you can have them scan your vehicle and, you know, save money. Or you would think, well, you got to think, um, you know, there's gas driving to the actual store. There's also the fact that they're going to have the exact same thing as one of these. And if they are knowledgeable on what they can read off of this, you know, they're going to be able to help you out. But if not, they're just going to kind of suggest, you know, the most common parts, which we call the parts cannon, which is really something you don't want to do. You want to diagnose and figure it out. So like in this vehicle's instance, I would definitely say instead of going through the whole process of taking off the catalytic converter and actually visually inspecting it, I would suggest to do an upstream and a downstream O2 sensor. Based on the vehicle's mileage, there's 130,000, I think, well, somewhere around 100,000. It's a wear and tear product. You might as well change it anyways. If that doesn't fix it, then you would go down the road of the much more expensive road of getting a catalytic converter. And then if, you know, the worst case scenario did come true, then you have new O2 sensors to go with your new catalytic converter. All right, so the last thing we're going to go through is the IM readiness. And basically, like I said before, that is inspection and maintenance. And it will actually run a series of tests that will let you know if your vehicle is going to pass like a state inspection or a smog test. Well, all right. So in conclusion, nowadays, I think owning one of these cheap little scanners is kind of more a necessity than a luxury. Even for a professional automotive technician, the first step usually is to well, run codes on the vehicle. It literally can tell you anything that is going on with it most of the time. You do still have to do some diagnosis, but like I said, check with Google and you will learn so much. But for the people who have made it this far, I really want to thank you so much. And I kind of want to explain why I've been gone for like two months. So unfortunately, we had to put down our 15-year-old pit bull, Tazzy, and that was kind of hard for us. Um, I knew that she was sick and she had cancer, so the last couple of months just kind of consisted of me, you know, making her life as good as I possibly could. Um, I also really took on fish keeping again. Uh, I went like crazy into fish keeping. And I think I was kind of doing that to get my mind off of Tazzy. And, you know, it's for the best. She's not suffering anymore. But I'm really glad to be getting back into the swing of things and making more content. So we have a lot more content coming up. Uh, things with the Taurus, things with the Roadmaster, more reviews, and all of that good stuff. So definitely check the link down below. I'm going to leave a link for this. And check out some of my playlists. And uh, please like, subscribe, comment. Um, I always answer comments, so it's literally free automotive repair advice. I always answer so as long as they can keep this going but yeah give us a like tell a friend about us and thank you again so much for watching and we'll see you again very shortly i promise say my name is ruby i'm a one-year-old pit bull who likes to eat human fingers she thinks it's a delicacy thank you guys bye